Um, but the problem, of course, sorry, is we heard a figure yesterday, 80% online. That's brilliant, but it's getting there. But it still means 20, 25% are not. There are more people in rural and remote areas that are not online, and those groups are particularly vulnerable. So what are we going to do in any strategy uh, to make sure that these benefits go to all Australians, it seems to me? Um, so it's a catalyst, I think, for a number of these things in, you know, which we'll go into, and I like the idea of the network society rather than the network. So it, it'll impact, I think, I've said a bit about that, and I'm going to say a bit more in conclusion, so let's not dwell there at the moment. But I'm quite interested in this. This is because of my public service background. So there's, there's an ongoing move towards personalization of public services anyway, co-production, all that stuff. Think about it, redesigning services together online. That is happening from e-government to we government. Co-produced government is what they're calling it. I quite like that, personalized. Making public services 2.0 happen. This is the bringing together of web 2.0 interactivity with public service redesign. I like this thing of moving from transactions online between public services and people to conversations and relationships. I think that is the truth of it, and this technology helps it. Making mass insight meaningful. Crowdsourcing. We're asking more and more people to tell us about our services using this technology. They're not just engaged in consultation. They're part of a more meaningful dialogue, collaborative customer service and crowdsourcing. All this is happening, and it's being reinforced by this digital move. Public service redesign. Okay. This I like. This is earlier technology, but I like it because of the robust Australian democracy on the left-hand side which is, uh, this is an interactive device of complaining about the street that's not been fixed. It's buggered, mate, which I think is, uh, which I love. Um, this, this is, uh, I, our professor from Finland is not personally responsible for this rather austere device, but this is uh, um, that all public service information about you as an individual is on one site in Norway. Chilling but effective. Um, this is more interesting. This is, for everybody working in public or social services, this is... Uh, that the, the, the hundred families in Swindon that we, we kind of knew were the worst families causing us most grief, most cost, but we weren't able to identify them because they were, they were being dealt with by 40 separate agencies that weren't talking to each other. We put them all on a broadband-enabled platform, set up a protocol around privacy. We discovered that we saved 40% of the budget by making sure that we just weren't duplicating each other's services. This is what you can do, but it comes back to smart governance for smart technology. That's just smart governance, it seems to me. So, big three things happening around this. Then I want to go to the strategy, right? Laying the foundations, NBN, high-speed broadband is part of the foundations, open data. Fostering culture change. This thing is not just new technology and old-style uh, public services. It's about changing both of them at the same time. So we need to nurture innovation, I think, in the public service a lot more than we've been doing. Right, now, so... The, the, the logic of all this is that this, the, the, the technology is brilliant, interesting, it's very fast, and it's coming to a place near us in a seven-year, eight-year rollout, but it's not automatic, you know. We have to bring our cleverness to the table. We need to organize. Um, so a local authority organizing itself, those are the things, you know, exemplary digital services, can it do them? Advocates, entrepreneur, supporting business in their locality, Right, digital inclusion work. Local authorities can do that. However, the strategy says that we need to think about the collaboration and business planning at a regional level. So lots of stuff going on, local government, various tiers of government, TAFE, community colleges, some brilliant stuff. We saw it yesterday. How do we tie it together to make it a kind of regional coordinated effort? That's the, and that's where the, the big benefit will come from, not just a, a bunch of individual effort, it seems to us, but, you know, and also the narrative around this, that we are coordinating ourselves to become a, rigid, a regional digital sort of um, exemplar for Australia, because I think people will look to us as this happens to see if we can really show how it should be done. So, said he, so we read a lot of things, um, absorb best practice. We went around a lot of places. The Numbucker experience was really good. Uh, we went all over, uh, I, went to, I, I met a relative in Bellingen and I didn't know existed, that was interesting. Um, the great thing about that was that uh, she was a thorn in the flesh of the local authority who loved me now, um, because she is, I, I, I'm Dr. Doolittle, I can talk to the animals, you know. <laughs> she just, uh, she, she, uh, she's, she's very benign force now. So I can do that for any local authority in Australia, by the way. So, uh, so, so we, oh, come on, what's happening here? Aha! There we go. So 10 key questions, right? This is the, 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 the meat. It's online, but this, this is the meat, right? 
So there's obviously a problem. You know, the NBN, great, but we, it's, its rollout is really imprecise and unclear to SMEs, public services. We can't know how to transform some of what we do unless we know the timetable better than it's been done. It's getting clearer. There's an announcement last week, another announcement on December the 9th. COFS knows what it's getting, but the rest of the region. So we think there's a gap in information. Um, the, uh, the whole issue about how private sector people go out and buy kit and public sector, how do we do this unless we know issues around supply and de demand and the full NBN deployment? So that was a critical issue that came up in the studies, in the uh, research and in the meetings we had. So a digital strategy for coordination was everybody bought into, but it should be for the whole area rather than just, if you like, coughs or the first footprints. It's for making sure that we're broadband ready, if you like, in the rest of society. I thought that was a good phrase that came from the actual meetings. So it's also a strategy for digitizing services and engagement with citizens, not just the MBN. This is a wider strategy. There's also a lot of existing fiber out there. You know, the uh, TAFE has some, university has some, health providers have some, schools have some. So we're wondering what we can do with that in the gap to the rollout. And I think it's a really important issue. There are lots of problems around using school-based or university-based anything because of the privacy and child protection issues. But can we break through? Can we sit down and work out, can we provide brighter, broader access? Because some of this fiber is 100 megabits and some of it is a gigabit, you know, which is internationally very competitive. So can we do more with that? Yes, we can. Um, consumer aggregation means can we, as like local authorities together or private sector manufacturers together in Ambuka are looking at this, sit down and procure faster, better quality, better speed, cheaper services from our internet, internet service providers at the moment by working together in procurement clubs? We think so, and we think public service could do that as well. So that's what that means. And we think local government is absolutely critical to the uh, exploitation of the uh, NBN and high-speed broadband because nobody else has a kind of big tent feel to them. They can try and drag in all the forces within their local authority area to sit down and say, you know, will you do the skills bit? Will you do the, um, will you do the, the, the support for SMEs and all that kind of stuff? So somebody has been sort of necessary in the chain. It's not just a NBN and then they announce it and then that's great. It has to be an effort, like a welcoming committee to organize it at local government and we think now at regional level so where's the knowledge sharing business support strategy? Where We think we provided the basis of it, but where's that going to come from in terms of funding and resource? It's critical. SMEs will benefit most, but they know least about some of this stuff. So it's digital inclusion and priority for the reasons I gave earlier. Who's going to lead on that in our region? Is it the not-for-profits? Is it colleges, TAFE? Is it everybody working together? We think it's everybody working together. <clears throat> so two things to go away with. There is a demand gap in a sense out there. Lots of people don't know what they can do with 100 megabits. Uh, they, the SMEs have not seen what companies internationally can do with this. When they do see it, when we show it, the demonstration effect is conclusive. So there's a bit of a demand gap out there. What can we do with these speeds? The supply gap is real. When you go again, Nambuka, you know, some people, Nambuka, some people have still got dial-up in, in the region. 10%, I think, have still got dial-up in the region. And, you know, as we know, speeds, qualities are low as they are. Yes, the NBN, NBN brings 100. Is it affordable? Question mark. But until that point, there's a supply gap. So we think we need to create the future now, which is to say, what is the innovation we can show now that gets the, some of this faster speeds that we know is good for us now, um, but also creates a kind of demand for uh, the high-speed broadband and how you use it creatively. So the developing of skills and knowledge of what it can do uh, among civil society people and, and business. That's the, that's the nub of it, it seems to me. Um, so what we've done is an unreadable uh, list of 20 recommendations, but I'm going to go through uh, five or six of them, and then I will conclude, because, of course, it's Friday. So. Right, okay. So um, <clears throat> what I think I will do is cleverly cross-refer to my written text and go through a couple of these. Uh, seamlessly, and if you believe I can do that, you'll believe in the healing power of crystals. <laughs> but I will, um, I will attempt to do that because it's really important to focus on in conclusion on what we think is the, the meat. And I urge you to have a look at it online and to engage with us because we've had a very iterative process. We went out and did the uh, workshops. We put up an issues paper online, got loads of responses to that. So we want more responses to this. So I think the first one is that somebody, uh, we think the RDA at a regional level needs to have a strong engagement with NBN to understand what the rollout is and to be a, an advocate, frankly, in saying, 
come on, let's get on with it. Let's at least understand the timetable a lot more. Um, the third one actually down there is about a memorandum of understanding between the local authorities in the area and the RDA about um, who, who does what and developing some of the uh, capacity of the RDA to coordinate um, around the, uh, the rollout uh, of uh, high-speed broadband, and that came from the workshops uh, themselves. So we, we fundamentally recommend, and I think this is quite an important device for Australia in a way, um, a regional digital partnership, not just another committee, but actually because the three tiers of government need to really get together around this. You know, there's lots of stuff in the and New South Wales Digital 2021 plan, which is about digitization of services, really. So we, need to, we think we need to create a tent, a big tent, where the tiers can get together with the not-for-profits in the area, with a number of the bodies, schools, universities, colleges, TAFE delivering and using uh, this technology to see what we can do together. So we think uh, a regional digital partnership, which would be the first in Australia, and we think it would be a very important device. Um, we also think that we might do something a bit more entrepreneurial at number seven, which is about uh, looking at this idea of bringing people together in, in this procurement club way that we could have a bit of buying power together instead of people doing it separately and getting, um, therefore, in a sense, picked off by uh, ISPs, but actually working together to try and see if we could purchase on, uh, together and, uh, services and just spread the message that, for example, social housing providers community housing providers might want to do that to try and cheapen some of the services for their own tenants, that kind of thinking. Um, we also think, number eight, that the RDA uh, Mid-North Coast should identify public organisations with the fibre, like universities with Arnet and TAFE, to explore opportunities for more wider access to, to using it. And they're, they're up for that conversation. Nobody knows where that will end, but it's a good conversation to have. Number nine is um, we, we're also looking to... Uh, to see what could be done with the existing fibre infrastructure that local authorities have. For example, COFS uh, lays down fibre whenever it opens up some utility or a new development, and they lease it to internet service providers. So that's quite entrepreneurial. Could we do that more? Could other local authorities do that? Are they already doing that? So that's what we think. Number 10 is interesting and easy and correct, is that there needs to be digital champions, digital advocates, SMEs, not-for-profits, loads of groups that are vulnerable. Can we find individuals who are really adept at this technology to be like volunteers for uh, engaging people and upskilling people? How do we engage society in this discussion and upgrade them? That's what that one's about. Um, the 11 is about the uh, learning from the rollout of the first and second test sites in, in the region, and particularly from COFs. The RDA is already involved in a learning exercise in that, and it will spread the message across the region about some of the learning from that. And that isn't just about being a good local authority as a planning partner or an engineering partner. It's about how you exploit the potential. So how are they doing it in COFs, and how are we spreading the message, and how is other people, in a sense, giving good ideas to this first and second test rollout about how they might do it. There needs to be a better discourse about the possibilities of this thing in the region, and we think the RDA should help bring that conversation together. Um, and if you look, go towards uh, 13, we think this is pretty critical. Every public service provider in the region should review how it will redesign its services, digitize its services, and its engagement with citizens. Because this technology is coming, so they might as well get ahead of the curve. And by doing that, they will create a demand for the technology. It's as simple as that. Uh, number 14 is, I think, a no-brainer. There's some very innovative work going on in the area around libraries. They're becoming knowledge stores rather than uh, traditional sources of books. And they do a lot around the digital inclusion uh, agenda. But we think they should be tied together a lot more to see what a regional effort can do. Um, number 15 is pretty interesting for those of us who like uh, our local authorities and public services to be more open. Part of the logic of all this is to free as much information uh, to be accessible to citizens as possible. Um, but by the way, there's a spin-off for local businesses when we do this because local authorities do lots of research they never share. We think they should, and we should become an exemplar for that in Australia. Um, 16 is about digital coaching, formal uh, digital coaching for E, for entrepreneurs, a network of e-entrepreneurs to help SMEs uh, upskill, upgrade. We need some serious digital business support in the region. We're looking to see what that is. We'd be very interested to know what people think, uh, the direction we should go with that, but it's critical. Um, and I think the last couple are uh, 19, um, 
and 20, uh, 18 and 19 are linked, really, which is a, a broad, enthusiastic, engaged campaign of information. What this thing can do, how it will help uh, deliver services, how we can transform uh, people's uh, incomes, really, and skills, and all the list of things we saw. But there needs to be an enthused campaign around that. And the final thing, I think, is around um, filling the gap. We, well, I'll end with this. The, uh, we think it's pretty important that... Um, there are a, a number of ISPs in the area already. There's an eight-year rollout for the MBN. Uh, clearly, we need to use wireless mobile, some of it which is coming via the NBN quicker than fiber itself. We need to work out how we can sp ensure that we get better speeds, better quality, cheaper in our region. But we think we need a, a, a discussion with ISPs in the area and whether they buy the idea of this aggregation of purchasing I mentioned earlier on. To conclude... So we think this, that there is an opportunity, it's an opportunity. Knowledge workers increase the GDP of an area. If you get more of them, you raise your GDP, okay? So that's the, that's the challenge, right? Uh, they, also, they, also live in, they also don't need to live near factories, okay? So there's an occupational, there's a, a locational um, flexibility in knowledge workers. They will live in beautiful areas if we seduce them, okay? Change market perception of the area is critical. The big banana to the big computer, can we do that? Um, Transform public service, I talked about, upskill, I've mentioned. Reinforce the emerging digital economy. But, fundamental. If you, if you haven't got uh, um, cleverness and organization and collaboration can make up for a lot of sins. And we, we think that the region can be exemplary in the way that this workshop, this session, this event is proving that there's a lot of appetite for collaboration and coordination and discussion about what we do together. This is a new agenda for this, and it will help the network itself be created. So we think the heart of it is uh, a, a coordination and to turn a network into what we call a network society and an economy. And I think that's probably it. Thank you very much.